All right, Doug, let's take a look at the NBA standings. Kind of interesting when you look at what is the play-in tournament right now. Charlotte is the seven seed. They're a game and a half back of Brooklyn, who's lost six straight. They're three and seven in their last 10. So Brooklyn, they're kind of reeling at the moment. Charlotte, a game and a half back from them. They are a half game up from Toronto, who is the eight seed. Charlotte lost to Toronto just recently. They're a half game up on Boston now. They just lost to Boston last night. They're also three games up on Atlanta, and they lost to Atlanta <laughs> in this recent stretch. Atlanta's seven and three in their That's last good. ten. Boston is seven and three in their last ten. Toronto six and four in their last ten. And here's one other interesting stat I want to mention. This is so Hornets, man. They they've done this. They are the only team in the play-in or playoffs that have a negative point differential. They're the only one. Like Blowouts. This, this it's is because they, they've yeah. been blown out that's and right. they've blown teams out. Right. Uh, that that That's the simple explanation for for what you see there. And, and it makes that Celtics loss it, it particularly brutal uh, because the Celtics are on a roll, the Raptors are on a roll, and, and they are nipping at the Hornets' heels. I mean, the Hornets are in this position now where a loss on a night – can send them from 7th to 10th in the East. I mean, that's how close it is right now, or it's getting that close, especially if Atlanta gets on another hot run. Uh, and then the Nets are giving you, they're begging a team. The Nets are begging a team right now, and the Cavs too. Uh, the Cavs are 7-3 and three in their last team, but they lost a game last night. So the I, And they, they've lost several games where uh, a little inexplicable loss. They're kind of teetering. Uh, are they really contenders or are they not? So uh, there is a spot in the playoffs begging to be taken. And right now the Raptors and the Celtics are making the better argument for that spot than the Hornets are right now. Yeah, and is Gordon you, Hayward that important? <laughs> is Gordon Hayward that important? <laughs> well, uh, you tell me. Are, are you are you kind of getting talked into that, or are you just kind of know. disgusted I'm with it? Yeah, you know, Gordon doesn't play last night. I I think he would have helped. You know, like I know the people are going to be mad at me and say Walker is uh, Gordon Hayward is Walker's favorite player, even though I've tried to trade him a couple of times. Like, I think Gordon is an important player to this team. And if you want to use the cliche, I think it rings true that he's a steadying hand. I think there is some truth to Gordon Hayward when he doesn't play and you have more losses by a decent amount than you have wins. I actually think he helps you last night. And even specifically so because you had so many dudes go cold. Miles Bridges was not good in this one, right? Only eight attempts and only hit hit two field goals last night. Two of fr uh, three from the free throw line. Didn't have any assists in, in 30 minutes. Just... Just not a good Miles game, you know. Uh, so if Miles doesn't have well, it, he got going, his lip busted. And yeah, that you know, I mean, it was bleeding pretty, pretty bad. It was no, um, you're, no, you're right. It was. So, so I think that, Gordon, may have, that may have taken him out of his rhythm. You know, the thing is with Gordon. When I look at this game, I think if Gordon reduces the amount of Hornets turnovers mm -hmm. by two to three. It probably makes the difference in this game, honestly. And there were a lot of players having to handle the basketball that you probably don't want handling the basketball for as many possessions as they did. And I'm, I'm kind of like looking at PJ Washington who, who we've talked, we've talked yeah. about in several episodes, uh, likes to, likes to dribble the basketball a little Every too once much in and, a while. Yeah. And it's like, Oh man. And it, it so rarely works out. Um, so if Gordon reduces those possessions by a few, then the Hornets are probably in, in a better position uh, than they are. But defend, look, do, you know, does he help them defensively in that third quarter where they got they got smoked? So yeah, I, I, I never know. right. I never think too much. Oh man, they're really struggling defensively. They need Gordon Hayward. I, I never really think that. I think you know, I, I don't think he's going to be this huge minus defensively. I just think that it's he's not the the guy. Hey, go guard Jalen Brown, who's torching us, or go guard whoever on God. the other team. That's a we didn't even mention that by the way. In this Boston loss, you get another bad Jason yeah. Tatum game where he goes one of seven from three. Jalen Brown was good, but not like forty. You know, he didn't put a forty burger on us, which he's capable mm -hmm. of. Uh, this really was Marcus Smart and Josh Richardson, like the Boston bench, which I mentioned in the preview is not good uh beats the charlotte hornets um you know just a, and just that's a been weird a game brutal game brutal that's loss been a, that, that's been a theme here recently when they've not had the good performances it's been the bench getting outplayed now again Jalen mcdaniel's not being in their helps not having your depth at least early on that doesn't that doesn't help you um jaylen mcdaniel's being out hurts is what i should say but you know kelly's back 
Hopefully he can knock off this rust and get back to contributing offensively a lot, just making shots. Once Gordon and Jalen come back, Gordon's out of the protocol, by the way. We haven't mentioned that officially, but he is out of the protocol. Hopefully he's back sooner than later. So I, I, the bench unit getting outplayed very frequently here recently, that hopefully will kind of stop some of their losing ways. The, the big question that I have coming out of this Celtics loss and in general, as we approach the trade deadline, is what is it going to take to get the Charlotte Hornets out of the endless middle and into the bottom of the top, as my friend Tom Wamsgam from uh, Succession would say? Mm -hmm. What is it going to take to get them into the bottom of the top, which is that sixth seed or fifth seed in the playoffs? Uh, because they've been stuck in the 7-8 position for so long. And you've seen teams like the Wizards and the Knicks. They got found out. <laughs> they were at the top of the standings, and all of a sudden now that they're at the bottom of the standings. But you've had other teams like the Bucks and uh, the Heat – and the Sixers who struggled a little bit out of the gate, who have now risen to the, the yeah. where we all thought they would be cream of the crop. But the Hornets, they've stayed right in that endless middle, and I'm ready to be out of it. And I hope that Mitch Kupchak, if you're listening, I hope you make a move at the trade deadline to get us out of this endless middle because I can't take it anymore. Well, I'm going to paint my face. That's out the shot. <laughs> we know James Borrego talked about this. They've played a lot of teams that have been very good at rim protection. And to Robert Williams, who's very good at that, had three blocks last night. And one thing we did not mention, here are the Hornets going big at the starting lineup. So you have Miles Bridges start at the three. P.J. Washington starts at the four. And Mason Plumley starts at the five. They went monstrous in this one. They didn't start Cody Martin, who just played 16 minutes in, in this game. And then Kelly you know, resumed his normal role coming back off the bench, just being that sixth man. But Because here's the bottom line, Walker. The Hornets are a team right now that have to adjust to their opponent whether it's changing the starting lineup or whether it's going to zone constantly through a game because you can't defend the rim, the Hornets have to adjust to their opponent. You know, that's that's what I'm looking for, for from a future Hornets team, whether it's, you know, at the back half of this trade deadline, the back half of the season or next season. To get, the Hornets need to get to a point where teams are adjusting to them. And, and and that's LaMelo Ball, too. LaMelo Ball, I think, in year three, that's the jumping off point. Can, can LaMelo Ball consistently provide the, the kind of aggressive production that we saw against Boston where, where teams are all of a sudden having to adjust to him as opposed to this team constantly having to adjust to well, their opponent. And I think some of that can be fixed, though, sometimes just by effort defensively. And what I mean by that is at the very beginning of this game, having a few days rest, by the way, transition defense was pretty awful. There was one possession mm -hmm. where there were like three guys jogging back while the Celtics are going full steam trying to find a basket. Oh, and they find one. And so if, if if you're going to be a running team, which yeah. is some of the benefits of being small, and then you score because you're running so well, well, great, but then you don't get back on defense, and so you don't make them adjust because, well, if they're going to score this basket, we're just going to try to run too, and if they're so great in transition, we're just going to go get this easy bucket. We can keep up with them, and then in the half-court set, which is inevitably going to happen a lot, we'll just stop them then. Uh, by like, the way, by the way, Boston doesn't run. They're not a high-paced yeah. team. They don't run. <laughs> that, you, what that was was Boston, uh, to their credit, the coaching staff identifying that the Hornets have a giant weakness defensively with transition defense. Mm -hmm. They don't give maximum effort. They don't give maximum focus night in and night out with transition defense. And they said, all right, well, we don't run, but you could run against this team. We're going to pick on this team. What, that, th th there have been a couple of losses now that, that I've thought, man, the Hornets have gotten punked. They've gotten picked on. And, and I would include this loss as well. And, and you know, they, they fought back. You know, they, they were resilient they in this game, uh, but but they've got to clean some of this stuff up um, and and make some make some moves that they I, I just don't feel like this team right now is a serious contender for the for the playoffs. One other thing. One other thing before we end, we had a big question coming into this game. Will James Booknight get minutes now that Kelly Oubre is back? <laughs> he did. No, <laughs> he, he did not get those minutes. It was Cody Martin with 16, Kelly with 34. Oh. And Nick Richards got minutes because they wanted to go big, played seven, and then didn't play much after that. I think had a like a foul. Here, let me pull up the box. Uh, yeah, Nick Richards had that one foul. It was a minus thirteen. Yeah, they went big. In the seven minutes. You know, they went big. I, yeah. I don't think you know. I don't think this is a definitive no. Like I think that there's a possibility we could see more more book night in the future if even with the Hornets being healthy, uh, depending on matchups, depending on if they need a little bit more offensive punch. 
and, and I think that to Book Knight's credit, he made the argument. It just yeah, isn't. It, it just wasn't strong enough. Uh, to justify playing him over over some of the veterans. So, so you got to be patient. Yeah. Um, tough schedule coming up. Cleveland at home. All, all of these games are, are at home. So lots of spe- uh, Spectrum Center action going on. But here are your opponents. Cleveland. Got to tom- beat them. Cleveland tomorrow. Got to beat them. Then Miami, the second night of a back-to-back on Saturday. Got to beat them. Toronto Monday. Chicago, Take care of business. Chicago Wednesday. And <laughs> Give then- me the space. <laughs> <laughs> and then it starts to ease up. I mean, not not even really. You have the, the one break against Detroit on the road. Then it's Memphis on the road against Minnesota. Uh, you, they've taken yeah. care of Memphis. All right. That's an easy win. Easy okay. day. All right. There you go. Have it called by Doug. You can. Uh, are you, so I guess you won't even wear the big dub hat for that one then. Like if it's so easy, right? Yeah. I'll wear Memphis. the big dub hat if <laughs> I, I know Miami's lost three in a row. They're missing some players. I don't know what the status of the roster is going mm-hmm. to be, but I think a win against Miami regardless of the roster would be just mentally uh, helpful for the Hornets at this point. Uh, so I would wear the big dub hat for that one. I don't know about Cleveland. No, not ready to give them a big dub. Just wear it around Nashville if you want. I mean, you don't have to wear it in front of the show. Just wear the big oh, dub I've, hat. My, if I remember to pack it on my trip to LA, I oh, remember to right. put it in the old suitcase. There you go. It's LA, man. People are just going to think you're normal. You are listening to the Locked On Hornets podcast. Main character for American Psycho was Patrick Bateman, which really confused me. I always thought that Jason Bateman was Patrick Bateman and that Patrick Bateman was Jason Bateman. (laughs) It's time for more of the Locked on Hornets podcast. 